And as security ramps up around the country, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser is now asking people not to come to the nation's capital for the inauguration. Our tradition, uh, in fact, our constitutional mandate uh, that the transition of power occurs by noon on January the 20th uh, will happen right here in the District of Columbia. Uh, and we want everybody to enjoy it uh, and enjoy it uh, right in their own states, in their own living rooms, and with their own families. We know that this is the right request for our public safety uh, and our public health. The FBI is warning all 50 states to be prepared, saying violent extremists could overwhelm local, state, and federal law enforcement. Let's bring in former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State and ABC News contributor Colonel Stephen Ganyard for more on this. Uh, Colonel, at least 25,000 National Guard members are being deployed to Washington. What's their role there, and how helpful do you think will it be? Uh, that's a good question, Diane, because, uh, you know, I think about that as 25,000 troops who are, um, you know, they're butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, they're military police, they're infantry people. Uh, I don't know what mix of kinds of capabilities are coming in. I mean, everybody feels a little bit safer if you've got somebody in uniform. They're friendly, they belong to states, and so uh, it's much more of a local feel. But I'm a little bit concerned because um, probably about a third of them will be carrying weapons as we came in today. You could see it on the street corners in D.C. You've got uh, National Guard with M16s over their shoulder. So who's got control of the use of force? Uh, who's actually controlling all these guardsmen who really aren't trained to be doing what they're doing? Only a smattering of them are trained in law enforcement. So it feels good. Maybe they'll be helpful. Maybe they can help with crowd control, hand out water. Uh, but it's a real question about how they're going to be integrated into the defense of the inauguration. And Steve, that, that's Washington, D.C. Look out across the country to the state capitals where the FBI has warned uh, there are also may be threats to be dealt with. I'm thinking of that, that Michigan moment when the, when the armed uh, people essentially stormed into the, they, they came into the Capitol with their long guns. So how are the states with fewer resources securing their capitals? Uh, that remains to be seen as well, Terry. I mean, it's quite a burden on a state uh, uh, police or law enforcement uh, capability to guard against a, a violent insurrection during a major event where there are going to be thousands, if not tens of thousands of people attending. So all all of this is really new territory where there may be a threat not only to the capital but to individual state capitals where p police and law enforcement are already stretched thin. And investigators are now looking into tours given at the capital the day before the attack. What exactly are they looking for? Uh, they're probably looking for inside inside collusion, whether somebody on the inside, whether it was a, a congressman or it was a staffer or somebody might have been helping or at least showing people where the hallways or where the different offices are. Right now, there are no facts to support that. But there are some, hmm, that doesn't sound right, uh, anecdotal stories that say, why were these people together the day prior? Why were they walking the halls? Uh, given how easily the, the protesters, the insurgents were able to get into the Capitol building, there's still some questions about whether there was inside help. And, and Steve, you mentioned the, the word insurgency. You know, is this essentially a, a domestic terrorist uh, movement that is part of a broader resistance to the constitutional order? And insurgency, is there anything we can learn from our experience around the world that way? Yeah, Terry, I was thinking about the terrible irony here. Um, after how many years, almost two decades, of being in Afghanistan and Iraq, where U.S. military was fighting and bleeding, fighting as a counterinsurgency, fighting against Al Qaeda, fighting against the various Shia militias, uh, various Sunni militias as well. So the terrible irony here is that the U.S. military has spent the past 20 years fighting insurgencies only to come home to face a domestic insurgency. Mm. Something else. Colonel Steve Ganyard, thanks very much. Thanks, Terry and Diane. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.